honestly, I didn't trust the media at all. I walked my younger one down the aisle. I did the kanyadan. I might have been facing the worst time probably in my career. I couldn't have imagined my life being more complete without them. I'm with actress Ravina Tandon. Thank you so much for talking to us and joining us on the Quen. Thank you, Ravina. My pleasure, Swati. We've seen you over the years don so many roles, but today we're going to talk about I think one of the most important roles that you don by choice at the age of 21, that's of becoming a mother. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I think it was a a, a very uh, impromptu decision and it was a decision that I uh took uh solely uh, it was uh, solely my responsibility with the support of my parents for sure i think that was one of the most uh, gratifying and satisfying decisions that i took in my life at the point where you know one is starting off and you feel uh oh you know i've got a whole life ahead and everything but this is something that i think i've always wanted to do and i just went ahead and did that so that was the decision making process honestly in my mind you were the first one to break this stigma of a single mother by choice especially as a celebrity when you're just starting off you're in the limelight a lot of people refrain from doing something like this and you just said yourself that it was the most gratifying decision Did you feel the same even then when you did it you know honestly i had been doing a lot of social work with my mom uh since i was in the 7th or 8th standard and and with my dad and uh, so that was something that was uh maybe uh, in in bred in me now you can legally be a, a single mom yeah. in those days you couldn't have uh taken responsibility for two kids so i was at that time more their guardian than being a mom per se and uh these were actually my cousins uh, uh daughters uh Uh, my my mom side and my dad side we've got huge families and uh, every gathering actually i would meet and i would say okay where are those two little girls who born in front of me i've seen them and and they were not getting the kind of life that they deserved unfortunately their mom had passed away and uh, that's when i legally took their guardianship and i said okay now enough of putting them in boardings and stuff i'm going to take over actually i kind of sat all my family down and said you know guys it's ultimately we are seeing this happen uh, and charity honestly begins at home uh, we've been working at uh, different orphanages here there etc doing things for people but here the two girls who born in front of us who deserve the kind of life that they should be getting and god has given me so much that it's it's more for me alone or my parents to digest alone when i can help someone out and give them a better life that they deserve so why not and uh, my parents wholeheartedly agreed with me there were a few naysayers in the entire you know how big huge families joint families are yeah. what do you do phir tumse kaun shaadi karega you'll come with baggage you know it'll be added uh, responsibility i said listen this is my decision and i will deal with it how it was and uh, the day i meet a man who uh, who loves me it it will come as a package deal love me love my girls i think it is anil's good karma that he met me and my good karma that i met someone like anil so that's when you you realize and recognize the character of the person as well so what were some of the challenges that you faced as a single mother honestly their schooling was a bit of a challenge because the younger one had never been to school so we had to admit her right literally though she was older uh she was 8 years old but we actually had to start her from like you know the the lowest grade um uh, class because she had never been to school and i can proudly say that today um uh, you know they both have their uh, they they're married they have their kids they have uh, flourishing businesses and they are crazy about animals so that is one thing which has been in in built with them and they do a lot of social work as well so in a way i try to make some mini me's uh, yeah. i try to do that <laughs> or try to bring them up the way i was brought up at a young age of 21 uh while when you took up the role of a mother a single mother that too what were the other ta- challenges in terms of you know uh, one is an emotional thing there's a personal life how did you kind of manage all of it by yourself my older one is about 11 years younger than me uh my my younger one is about 13 years younger than me 
so we didn't have that glaring an age gap like a 20 year or 15 year old age gap so we after a certain while when they grew up a little we were almost like friends and uh, even though i might have been facing the worst time probably in my career or facing uh, the worst time with probably a bad relationship they were there for me through and through i think for me i i would tell them everything the minute when they got into their teens i would not hide things i would I would tell them what I was going through, uh, whether it was a bad breakup of some kind of professional rivalry. And I would tell them things that, you know, be prepared because life is not all sugar coated. This can happen to you. That can happen to you. So this is how you need to learn. Learn from my example. So, yes, they are my best friends. Even, I mean, they are my best friends today. You know, you were in the limelight when you adopted them. So how did you keep your children away from the media glare, from the case? Those days, honestly, I didn't trust the media at all. There was so much yellow journalism. So even if you had to do a good deed, they would just probably try to find some controversy or some scandal in it and, you know, try to, uh, you know, probably find the causes, reasons, or is this the hush-hush thing? Are these really her kids or whose kids? Or, you know, that whole thing I wanted to keep them away from. So I did no press conferences when I was signing the papers or I did not, uh, you know, encourage the press either from getting to know them. I kind of kept them away. And then when they were old enough also to handle the, the questions that were thrown at them, because so many times when they were working, um, uh, both my girls uh, flew also for a while. Uh, they were in different airlines and they, they took up jobs. And even then at that time, people would ask them, oh, so are you adopted? And are you actually, you know, so... I, I actually wanted to keep them away. So many times when I'd speak about them, I'd say, so please don't uh, print their names. I, I would prefer if you don't take their names because then they are put up with these embarrassing questions as to, oh, okay, what happened to your parents? Right. You know, why did they not undertake you up? I mean, oh, so what is she? You know how it is that they have to yeah. face. And sometimes there's jealousy. Sometimes there's unnecessary people just want to be uh, mean for no reason at all. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's the thing I, I wanted to kind of protect them with you know as mothers of course every time that, they, that we spend with our child every memory that we do create is something that's always for keeps is there a top memory that comes to your mind when I ask you what's your favorite memory of the three of you together I think obviously their weddings because um, I walked my younger one down the aisle I did the kanyadan uh, in the Hindu rituals and in the Catholic rituals I did the I, I walked her down the aisle so that for me was is really, really special. So I don't really believe in these rituals that, oh, women can't do this and men only can do it. And, oh, men can't do this, only women can do that. I, I, I don't believe in that. And that's when I was so honored when my younger one asked me to walk her down the aisle. Even the Panditji let me do the Kanyadan. Yeah, so these, these, these are very, very precious memories for me. In fact, uh, my older one's in South Africa, so I didn't see the birth of her son. But uh, my younger one's uh, son uh, was born in front of me. I was in the th operation theater with her, with filming each wow. moment. So, you know, and holding her hand and, and little Rudra was born. As single mothers, we are very wary of letting people into our lives because, of course, our children become our priority. You know, we want to protect them first. So what would you tell women out there, single mothers out there, who are a little wary of letting someone into their lives? You know, honestly, I'm wary about uh, just letting anyone into my life in any case. So I do a cross check, double check. I play it cool. I see how the person is. And it's, it's very necessary for me. And there's something I think I've taught my, uh, all my nieces, my girls, everything. I say, you know, you come to know a, a person's character by the way he or she treats their parents or the way he looks after his parents. You know that he will take care of you all your life. So for me, that's the gauge. So that's when you, you realize and recognize the character of the person as well. When you adopted the girls at such a young age, you were also working. And today, a lot of single mothers who are stepping out, going into the world to work, uh, they have this guilt that they carry with them. That's the single mother's working guilt because they're leaving their kids behind. Is that something that you also face? And how did you overcome it? You know, honestly, I think of my dad and mom so because I knew that they are being taken care of and I would talk to them every day on the phone and, and sometimes outdoors they join me uh, but yeah there is there is that thing that the dilemma which I think most mothers face is trying to excel in their careers trying to give it their best and then struggling to be a good mom at the same time to be there at every moment for her kids um, in fact after my kids were born 
uh, I kind of took a sabbatical because I uh, knew that uh, I I wanted to be around when my son took his first steps. My daughter spoke her first word. They lose their first tooth, and and I also kind of was working at the same time. But you kind of set your priorities. It all depends what your priorities are and how you manage to balance. It is very tough to balance and. Um, uh you also don't want to play the mom victim card all the time but something that just drives you to do it and you just need to reach that right balance what was the most toughest or the most challenging thing as a mother that you've had to do personally if you ask me i think giving it my 100% into motherhood comes a little naturally to me i think i am maternal like one of my friends told me because i keep bringing up the you know picking up kittens from the road and i keep picking up puppies from the road and stuff and she's like do you ever stop you know you just want to you have this thing of now i want to start looking after something else the only challenge i faced during motherhood luckily not with my older ones but with my younger ones was the weight gain that i had i would have had 10 more babies if i wouldn't have been putting on so much weight every time So yeah that was the only challenge and then losing it all off was it ever a moment or an episode that made you question yourself as a mother or the decision that you took never ever if i had to do it all over again i'd do it all over again and probably i'd do it twice thrice all over again i mean at the time after rasha ranbir grew up a little and i was telling anil i think now we should adopt another baby so he was saying no let's have another baby i said i'm not going to put on weight but i think we can we have space to adopt another baby before we go is there anything you'd like to tell your kids i couldn't have imagined my life being more complete without them so with with them it's 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 the completion that i always asked for yes thank you so much ravina for talking to us wish you a very happy mothers day and so we can see that what you've done with your kids and how you've spoken about them the foundation and them as people it's all beautiful thank you so much for talking to us and you have a great mothers day too Thank you so much.